Since the inception of desktop 3D printing, the technology has been rapidly evolving, from the actual machine's hardware, to the materials available to print, and to the slicing software, there is constant new improvements coming out. Well, back in 2014, when I first got into 3D printing, there were slicers, but they were nowhere near as fine-tuned as they were today. They basically had some overall parameters with very few features, and you were left to kind of figure out what worked and what didn't work through trial and error. Fast forward to today and there is a massive range of free slicers out there with a ton of different features. Not only do these slicers have built-in profiles for your more common materials like PLA or PTG, but they've also got settings for the more complex materials like glass-filled materials or carbon fiber nylon. And not only do they have that, but they also have hundreds of different printer profiles built in. I know offhand that Cura, Matter Control, I think Prusa Slicer and also Idea Maker all have other printer profiles built in so that way it is really easy to get up and running. Although for many of these standard settings are gonna be more than sufficient, there are some advanced or additional features that you might not be aware of that can really improve your overall printing experience and maybe give you a result that you are even happier with. So, so far this year in Cure, we've taken a look at custom support generation. We've also taken a look at sequential printing. Well, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at Cura's ironing feature. Now, ironing is not something that's unique to Cura. I know that there's many other slicers that have it, but because Cura is the slicer that I use and my slicer of choice, that is why we will be covering it specifically in Cura today. With this setting, the printer smooths out the top layer of your printed parts, which can be useful for your own prints, or we just recently talked about selling parts through a print farm. It can be really useful for parts that you want to print that maybe you want them to have more of a finished look and you're trying to get rid of some of those layer lines. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to activate the ironing feature in Cura. We'll take a look at the sub menu for the ironing feature, so that way we can take a look at what all the different settings mean and what they do. We will of course do some ironing. We'll print some parts without ironing and print some parts with ironing enabled, so that way we have a visual representation of what this can do to your parts. And we'll also check on things like how this will affect print time, as well as if this will have an effect on your tolerances, specifically in the Z axis. As you can tell, there is a ton to cover. I'll try to place some timestamps down below if there are certain things you want to skip through or certain things you want to check out specifically. But without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So the ironing function works by keeping the nozzle hot and going over the top flat surface of your printed part while laying down just a little bit of filament, which basically fills the gaps of the layer lines that are already there. By doing so, it will make your parts visibly look smoother and of course, to the touch, they actually will be smoother. It is worth noting that at least as of now, the way the ironing function works is it can only be done on flat surfaces. So now that we've covered just a little bit about what ironing is, let's hop over to Cura and take a look at how to activate it. As of making this video, we are using the latest version of Cura, which is 4.8. By default in Cura, you will not be able to see the ironing options. In order to activate these or to enable them so that way we can use them, we need to head over to the right side where the print settings window is, and on the top there is a hamburger menu. If we click on that, followed by the manage setting visibility, we can see all the different settings that are activated and hidden by default. Since there are so many options, the easiest way to find it is just to search the word iron in the top search bar. If you want to keep it simple, you don't have to activate all of the options that pop up. You could just activate ironing, but for the sake of this video and us wanting to have some control and customizability, I'm going to check all of the boxes under ironing. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and close out of that window. Now that we've enabled these, they will appear under the shell sub menu. So when you click on the enable ironing, it will activate this with the default options. And if you just want to test out this feature, all you really need to do is slice your part and you can hit print. However, for those of you that maybe want to tweak these settings or understand a bit more about what each setting does, we'll run through those really quickly. The first option we have is just a checkbox to decide whether we only want to iron out the topmost layer. If you for some reason have a part that has a flat surface that's lower than that top layer and you want that ironed as well, then you would leave that box unchecked. Really, there's not a right or wrong and it's just personal preference based on the desired part finish that you're going for. Below that, we have the ironing pattern, which has two options. The first is zigzag, and that's what's gonna be enabled by default. Zigzag is just that, and when running the ironing, the nozzle will move back and forth in a zigzag pattern. The other option that is available is concentric, which will primarily be used for round or circular faces, as this is gonna create a pattern that is printed from the outside to the center of the print. The next option is line spacing. So this is gonna be, as it's doing its passes, how close together do you want each pass to be? The default value is 0.1, which will create an incredibly smooth surface, but 
these small passes can really increase the print time on your parts. So depending on how smooth you want your parts, you can adjust this value. The next option is ironing flow. When running the ironing setting, you do not want very much filament to extrude, just enough to fill the layer lines on the top of your part. The default value for this is 10%, but if you feel like it's not extruding enough material when ironing, you can bump this up slightly, or if your top surface is still ending up rough, you may want to decrease this as it's possible that it's actually over extruding a bit while running ironing. The ironing inset is how far away from the edges you want the passes to be. So when ironing, since you are depositing a little bit of filament, if you go all the way to the edges and deposit filament, it could give you kind of a rim or almost like a reverse elephant's foot, if you know what that is, on the top of your part. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't iron all the way out to the perimeter. The default value on this is 0.08, which worked really well for me. So if you're happy with the stock settings, I don't really see any reason why you would wanna change this. And the last settings are just gonna be for speed and acceleration, and those are kind of self-explanatory, but on those, I also ended up leaving those values as a default. All right, now that we've covered how to enable ironing and all the different options, let's do some printing. So for this part, I went ahead and headed over to Fusion 360 and created a really simple name tag. It basically has a flat back plate and then extruded text that says the word ironing with a flat surface on top. This should be a perfect example of something that could benefit from ironing if we wanna smooth out our text or smooth out the back plate for this nameplate that we created. As for the printer, we are going to be using the Artillery Hornet. I did decide that for the first print of this nameplate, I just am going to keep everything stock and leave ironing as off, just so that way we can print this out. And this is how a normal part would look if I printed it without ironing enabled. And this is how pretty much every part I've ever printed has looked coming off of the machine. Once the original part was done, I went ahead and enabled ironing. I kept all of the values at a default and I had the box for just iron the top surface unchecked. So it ironed both the back plate and the top of the text. Once that one was done, I followed that up with just a ironing of the topmost layer because I wanted to get a comparison of one, what it would look like just having the top ironed and also two, what would that do to my print times? And it actually did make a pretty significant difference. So running this part without ironing was a two hour and three minute print. With ironing only the top layer, it went up to two hours and 18 minutes. And with ironing all the top surfaces, the print time increased to two hours and 47 minutes, which is a pretty massive jump from having no ironing on. One thing again that I will say is that if you adjust the speed settings and if you adjust the 0.1 default pass through, you can make it where it doesn't do quite as many passes and still smooths out the layer, but doesn't increase your print time by so much. But as you saw there going from two hours and five minutes to two hours and 45-ish minutes was a pretty substantial jump. So again, this feature is something that is not something that you'll want to use all the time, but if it's appropriate, if it's a finished part that you're selling that just needs to have it, if it's a part that maybe you are going to have to hand sand and post process, um, this might help speed up that process. I also did try ironing with the concentric pattern, but like I expected the results on this particular print since it was not round, were not nearly as nice as just going with the standard zigzag pattern. So one thing I noticed on all the iron parts was that there was still a couple of different passes that I could see where it looks like the nozzle might have dug into the top layer. And I wasn't sure initially whether this was a setting in the slicer I needed to adjust, like the amount of uh, flow that the filament had coming out, or whether this was maybe something to do with the Artillery Hornet. This is a pretty new machine to me and I haven't done a whole lot of testing. So I went ahead and took this model and I sliced it up for the Artillery Genius Printer, which is one I've had for about a year. I've done a ton of printing on. I know the quality that I can expect off that machine and I hit print. Well, when I took it off of that machine and compared it to the back plate that came off of the Hornet, well, they were exactly the same. They had the exact same travel points where the nozzle seemed to dig through the printed part, which ultimately leads me to believe that this is just a setting in the slicer. And if I were to adjust the flow rate, maybe slightly lowering that so it's not extruding quite as much filament or potentially playing around with a different setting that made it where it didn't pass over the printed part once it was done with the ironing, I can help to remove this uh, kind of defect or this, this blemish on the uh, smooth iron surface. I did do a few other prints just to test out and show you guys the difference between an iron surface versus a not iron surface. I found a uh, just a simple handle that I printed out that was flat and that one only had one small mark where it looked like the nozzle kind of went over it, but it looked a lot better 
overall using the ironing feature than it did on the nameplate. And then I also wanted to print out Chep's 20 millimeter calibration cube. So I printed that out with ironing and without ironing to do two things. One, I wanted to show you guys, of course, the difference it, looked, uh, it looks like with the ironing on versus not on, but I also wanted to get out my calipers and see what the original model printed at and what the ironed model printed at, just to see how much of a difference it did or did not make in changing the actual height of that cube by using the ironing feature. Stock off the Hornet, the cube was 19.88 millimeters with ironing turned off. When I turned the ironing on and printed it out again, I was actually incredibly surprised by how little the material had been deposited on the part. For the iron calibration cube, the measurement only showed 19.9, which was much less than I had originally anticipated. Now, the cool thing about that is, is that if you have a part that is going to be a functional part or that does have relatively tight tolerances, you can still potentially use the ironing feature without it actually making the part not usable or having to compensate for that in your CAD design. So I thought that that was neat to see that again, if you've got your ironing settings dialed in and it's not depositing too much filament, it doesn't necessarily add that much to the height of your part. I think that ironing is a pretty incredible feature and it's awesome to know that if I ever need a smooth top surface and I don't wanna do sanding, that by clicking one button and just waiting a little bit longer, depending again on what my settings are, that I can have a part that comes out with a much more finished look. So I can really see this being useful for either people that are printing out parts for sale that um, just really want to have the smoothest, cleanest finish that they possibly can get off of their FDM printer or for people that are maybe doing a lot of post-processing, potentially by having the machine iron this out, this can help to speed up your process from getting from point A to point B. If you have been using ironing for any extended period of time, whether it's in Cura, whether it's an Idea Maker or Prusa's, um, please let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been like and what kind of tips you might have for others looking to use this feature if there's something I didn't cover. And if you are watching this and do try the ironing feature for the first time, please let me know also down below what your experience has been like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you also learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. We are, I, this is either the last video of the year or there's one more video before the new year, but I think this is the last one. And if it is, that's crazy because we have had a video every single Saturday. I just want to say, if this is the final video based off uploading, thank you guys so much for all of the support this year. The channel has grown bigger than any of the previous years I've ran this channel. The support's been incredible and I am so proud to see what we have built together and thankful for all of you guys that keep coming back every single week. If you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below to my Patreon. There are some really cool rewards and it really does help me out a ton. And for all of my existing Patreon supporters, you guys are absolutely amazing. I really appreciate you guys helping to support the channel, which allows me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content to share with you guys. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.